Love that sound every time. Love it. Anyways, good morning, everybody. This is Anthony Bjorn from Mission Start Podcast with another episode of Mission Start Podcast. Actually, let me just double check because, as you know, I stream on multiple channels, and I got to be sure I'm streaming on the right channel. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, it should be like, hey, what is this going on here? So let me just double check. Check the stream on Twitch. Um, let's see. Come on, give me the green light. And we are... It's loading. I think we're I think we're... Yes, we're live. All right, cool. Awesome. Just double checking. We are live. We're on the right channel. Welcome. Welcome to another episode of Mission Start Podcast for the week of the 9th of January of 2016. And to kick things off in the second official week of the new year, I'm joined by no other than Greg Dietz. Hi. I, uh, I did something cool yesterday. No, did you? What was it? I got me a Shovel Knight Amiibo. Oh, Look yeah. at it. Look at the Shovel Knight Amiibo. It's so cool. <laughs> All right, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, you told me that this morning. And it's like, oh, man, I need to get a Shovel Knight Amiibo. Um, I didn't know that those came out recently, so um, I have to go get one. Anyways, if you're listening to this, it is Saturday. Um, you probably already bought your lotto tickets by now. Last I checked, it was at eight hundred million dollars, <coughs> near, nearly a billion dollars. Um, the what tickets? Lotto tickets, Powerball. Oh, uh, that's right. Yeah, it's, uh, it's nearly a billion dollars. Is it? Well, probably is me a billion after today. It's crazy. Um, I was gonna say. Oh, by the time you're listening to this or watching this on YouTube or on Twitch or on or listening to us on MP3, uh, iTunes or Stitcher, uh, Awesome Game Sunquick has ended, but. Since you're no, it this is gonna end today. Today's last day. Yeah. Oh. Oh. By the time they're listening to. It. Yes. Yes. Understood. Yes. Got it. So with that said, we must talk about awesome games done quick. Um, awesome games done quick is another. It's basically the same thing that summer games done quick. It's just more in the autumn. Um, or in the in the early uh, January time, winter is a uh, season, and uh, basically they come together, they play lots of lots of games, they speed run them for charity, um, and uh, they do this twice a year. Um, yes. So uh, you know it was really cool watching some of the speed runs from uh, from this past week. Um, and you know this just... morning I got up early to make sure I caught the shovel night one. Well. Yeah. Technically, Plague Knight, but, you know. Right. Oh, was it was a Plague Knight speedrun? Yeah, yeah, it was uh, New Game Plus. Oh, sick. That's awesome. I'm about to go back and watch that. Um, There's definitely some awesome speedruns I've been watching this past week. Um, I really love the uh, the blindfolded... Um, uh, what was it? It was blindfolded uh, Punch-Out. That was really cool. Um... They did. They they blindfolded and they pretty much played the entirety of Punch Out and beat every character, including Mr. Dream, which is arguably one of the hardest characters <laughs> in any yeah, game. Yeah, I didn't catch that one, unfortunately. Yeah, um, and uh, there was also some other ones I really like and enjoy, enjoyed as well. Um, again, I like the uh, the uh, the speed run by the guys who uh, who ran the um, Battle Block Theater. They had um, the voice actor. Oh yeah, they, yeah, they did that last year and. Uh... When I read on Twitter, I was like, oh, man, I'm missing that. Like, I was so disappointed because I think I was at work, I want to say. Mm-hmm. Where was I when that was going on? Yeah. I just it, know I couldn't watch it. Yeah. It was, like, I think in the middle of the day? I don't know. I remember watching it, like, on <laughs> on the way home. I was like, ah, oh, this is the greatest. Um, I really enjoyed the Mario Maker speedrun. That was really cool. Oh, my God. That yes. was easily one of the best highlights of the whole, of the whole thing. Like, yes. God, that was really cool. Yes, that was that was cool. Um, it it seemed kind of barren in terms of like what's being shown this year, but um, regardless, there's still a lot of good stuff um, that are being. What shown. do you mean by that, by the way? Like there aren't for me like there isn't that many games I'm really interested in watching speed run. Um, there's definitely some games I I have an interest in. 
Um, I, I I like the Porter Two speed run, but uh, that they did earlier uh, this week. Um, but like from that the was li- interesting. but the, from the lineup, like there wasn't really much like I was interested in. I think one of the like there, I, can, I can go on and say like other ones are really cool, but like um, for me, it was like there was only a handful of games for me that I really wanted to watch at the speed run. So to me, it just mm. felt kind of barren, but still good, still good. Regardless, um, let me check. There's been quite a few, but I think they're trying. You know, they they don't want to have the same games every single year all the time. Like they want to kind of change it up. It's true. It's very true. Um, let me actually. I'm gonna do a little streamception in a minute there because I want to see how much they raise at the moment. Oh, I have it up right now. It's uh. Oh. Eight hundred and fifty-four thousand four hundred forty-eight. Sick. Awesome. So they're a hundred, hundred fifty or hundred forty-six, I'd say from. Uh, from one million, I think they'll. I think they'll make that because they still oh, got to. Sure. Because they still got to do the Metroid speed run. Uh, the, the well, race. they still got a couple speed runs tonight that are, uh, um, like super long, mm-hmm. and that usually like also the last like couple hours brings in like a really tough pull. So yeah, it's definitely, really interesting. Definitely, they'll break a million for sure. Yeah, for sure. Um, so yeah, shout out to those guys, and definitely if you guys can definitely check out the archive. Uh, they're, they're pretty quick, <laughs> quick. Uh, when they upload their uh, speed runs on their YouTube channel. So definitely check it out. Um, just look up Awesome Games on Quick on YouTube and you'll find their YouTube channel. So definitely check it out when you can. When you can. So yeah, there you go. Okay, so, oh. Does I that just, count as news? Yeah, <laughs> it counts as news. <laughs> um, I forgot to change the title of that for the current topic, so oops. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so. Let's go from a charitable organization to a story that was kind of interesting this past week. Um, so, um, there was a Twitch Plays uh, game this past week. Um, actually, let me turn this down a, a tad. Sorry, my background music is a little loud. Oh wait, hang on. I'm playing shovel. I'm playing plug night right now, so. Ah, gotcha. There we go. Okay, better. Fucking, 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 <laughs> fucking. I'm dead. Um, what was I? Oh yeah. yeah. This game is uh, so much harder than shovel night. Of course it is. It's fun, but it's hard. Um, what was I? Okay, so there was a game this past week, um, that uh was a Twitch plays uh type of game, but. The, the the reason why it's a story this week is because uh, it's called the game is called Punch Club, and the only way this game will ever get released is if um, the people on Twitch would beat it, uh, a la Twitch Plays. So they made a special version of the game, and basically they had to go and beat the game um, using the Twitch Play command, using hashtag, you know, move up, you know, get a sandwich, right, right, right. and whatnot. Um, the game is basically you are a boxer. You are you need to train to get in shape, and you're you're trying to get revenge to who your father died uh, to a boxer. So you want to get so revenge. So your creed, pretty yeah, pretty much a white creed. Um, so yeah, basically you're just trying to uh, you're trying to level up in the ranks. You know, go through different rounds. Um, you know, fight fight different uh, opponents along the way. Um, so. This challenge was put out by the developer, and um, you know, as as internet as as you know as Twitch is, um, they took upon themselves to, to do it. And let me make sure you bring up the story. It took them around 36 hours to complete, so pretty fast. And uh, beca- and because of that, now Punch Club is now available for everybody to buy. So. A very risky move, really bold move. If you think about it, because like they, they, it was a cool, it's a cool idea to have the Twitch plays, but having it to where the game will not be released until they beat it, uh, was a was a pretty bold move on their end. Cause yeah, like, absolutely. Yeah, that's a marketing ploy too. I mean, you got to think of it from that perspective. Like, you know, if we get these kids to come in and to play these uh, these games that. Um, or play this game on Twitch, you know, like, that's, it's just, it's bold, you are correct, but it's also very much, like, 
it makes sense to me that they would do something like that. Mm -hmm. It's it, you know Twitch is where all the kids are, and uh, it just I don't know. I, I think it's really smart. Yeah, it's definitely I wouldn't have used a tactic, but then again, I'm not a game developer, at least not yet. <laughs> um, right. And, Working on it. Yeah, and it's it is definitely like a it's a bold, bold tactic. It's very risky too because like you know there's obviously the you know the risk of like what if they never beat the game then you can never release the game, you know. Right. So, yeah. Um, but you know, this is the internet and this is Switch, so like you know, getting a game to be finished by Twitch Play seems to be coming about a little bit easier every time. So. I don't think you'll see this very often, though. I think that this was a, an idea that they had for a game, and or to, to market a game, I should say, and it worked. And so now they're just kind of like, every time now. Yeah. Every single time. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So, um, so this is 2016, and 2016, apparently this year, is the year for VR. Now we've talked about VR in, the, in this show before. We, you know, I said my piece, you said your piece. Like we, we both believe that this is going to be like a trend. No, not a trend, but a, a flash in the pan. You know, I don't think he's going to going to go off as well. You know, we we agree on that. Um, the thing that so with that being said, VR is coming out this year. Um, recently Oculus announced that their uh, Oculus Rift is going to come out this year for around six hundred dollars, and that for them is like. Is cheap considering how much they had to to make the Oculus Rift. Um, also, like right now, uh, CES is happening right now. And for those who don't, who don't know, CES is like the like the Super Bowl of technology. Uh, I thought it was over. Is, is it, it over? Going on? I might I might be wrong. Um, is is it always the first week of January this happens, or is it the second week? Because I know it's usually the one or two weeks. I don't know. I... Yeah. I don't remember. Um, but ba but uh, so there was a quote that was uh, posted from uh, Sony in an article done by the BBC News. Says that uh, CES 2016, Sony says PlayStation VR will have over 100 titles. Sony's chief executive to has told that BBC that developers are working on 100 or more titles for its forthcoming virtual reality headset. HEC and Oculus have made more noise about their arrival gear at the CS Tech Show over recent days, but Kaz Harai told the BBC, BBC S, no, BBC, BBC, I can't pronounce that, <laughs> um, technology correspondent Roy Kellen Jones that the PlayStation VR has attracted a lot of support from third party game developers, and then they got more information. So definitely check, if you want to find out more information about CS and about Sony VR, check out BBC News uh, in the technology section. So, with that being said, like, it's what I'm interested in is see what the reaction is going to be. Because this is the year that, that VR is going to finally, you know, and I'm not to steal this quote from a podcast, it's going to hit the rubber. Like, this is going to be where we're going to put up or shut up to see what exactly VR is going to be, how is it going to be shown. Um, and obviously, like, VR, I believe, has much more, much more uh, use for it outside of gaming. But I am very curious to see what the reaction is going to be uh, with the game industry people as well as you know the consumers. I think I think VR, like I said, I I, do, I still believe that VR is going to be a flash in the pan. Um, I don't think much of it in that regard because I don't know, man. Like it'll be fun. Uh, a lot of the stuff that's already come out for VR is a blast, and. Um, I know a lot of people like it, but my problem, and something that I've talked about before, is that it's going to be a gimmick, and the problem with people in general is that they kind of fall for gimmicks real easily. Yeah. Well, <laughs> Nintendo. <laughs> um. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Um, the th so... I mean, I hope it's not a flash in the pan, yeah. I hope that it stays around, because like I said, it's really cool. It's just... Much like with, uh, with, um, what's it called? Motion controls. Like, or, or peripherals for music games. Like, sure, Guitar Hero and, and Rock Band just had a, just had a comeback, but do you know how many copies they've sold? Yeah. 
Not much. Not much. Not much. And and motion controls are going out. You know, like gaming came back. Like if you look at the video game crash mm-hmm. in uh, eighty two, eighty three, something like that. Yeah. Um. It crashed because there was an abu- there was over an abundance of of shitty games. And then Nintendo came in and they were like, no more shitty games, but we also have a better controller scheme. Um, and I feel that beyond... Hold on one second, I got a cough. Still getting over this cold. Uh, I don't thinking. have the cold, but you know how like you... Let me yeah, that, yeah, that, that, that uh, cough hangs around for a bit. Uh, that feeling. Yeah, it does. <laughs> um... But uh, when Nintendo came in and they made their new system, the NES, it sold a lot. It sold really well and brought video games back because of how Nintendo handled it. Um, as video games grew, it was just a natural thing to just play with your hands and use your eyes. Mm-hmm. It became so secondhand. Trying to change that isn't going to work ever, period. It'll work for a little bit, it'll make you a lot of money real quick, but it just won't stay. Plus, and this is a huge plus, the expensiveness of the Oculus Rift, it's not, it's not, it's just not. Yeah. It, 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 there will be some people that will buy it, and when it goes down in price, more people will get it, but it'll collect dust. It'll mostly collect dust. Yeah, I mean, like... I, I agree. I think that the, the VR is not going to be as... It's going to sell a lot. I've heard that the Oculus Rift already sold out. Um, but, there's okay, it's going to be good for a few things. The Oculus Rift and all these VR devices, they're going to be good for first-person shooters and those type of games. They're going to be good for horror games. Um, they're going to be good for racing games. Um, I might throw in football if they put in like that first-person view of football, kind of how like... Um, uh, NFL 2K, not 2K, uh, the ESPN video game they did way back then for 20 bucks. Um, they had a first person mode you can you, you can uh, view it as a quarterback or, you know, running back or whatever. Um, it'll be good for This is also going to limit people who have motion sickness too, so like, there's that. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, it's going to, it's going to depend on exactly, like, they can only do a certain amount of games with the VR um having using it for like a third person where your head is the camera uh i'm not quite sure that will appeal to some people i'm not quite sure if having um you know a different view when playing fighting games like you know a third person view which was kind of already attempted by nintendo but it never like it never caught on so eh, i could be wrong I mean, what we say could be wrong, you know, for all we know, VR may be the future, but as of right now, as of, like, the history we've been through, and just the history of, like, what have games have shown, it's like, it is traditionally done with a controller and a TV, you sit down and you play with your hands. Um, having a VR experience, while it was kind of touted in the 80s, like, as an next experience, like, trying to reinvigorate that through, uh, through this year. Um, yeah, it's, it's just, I just... I, don't I just know. don't see it happening, man. Like it. Like I know I'm not an old fogey here. I know that like. I love new technology. I really do, and. When. Uh, when it comes down to it. I want new technology all the time. I want to experience new technology. I want to check it out. I want to play with it. I want to enjoy it with friends. But there's just something about this one that I'm like, I just don't see it, man. Yeah, I know. It's what to wait and see. I, mm, yeah, what to wait and see. But like, here's the thing. Of I course, say. of course. I mean, like, I'll say everything, but like, it is literally a wait and see thing. So like, it's, I don't know. I, I don't think it's gonna take off. I think that. I think no. Like I said, I think it will take off, but not permanently. Yeah, it'll be, it'll be temporary. Not like gaming has today. No, no. The one, but the one company, the one industry that will benefit from this is obviously the porn industry. They are going to take advantage of this. I, I wouldn't I, doubt. I wouldn't doubt it. But they are. I, yeah, I wouldn't doubt it either. It's. I mean, that's. I. I feel like that's a no-brainer. Yep. 
Um, also, shout out to Hot Coldman. I don't know why I just, uh, <laughs> he wanted me to shout him out in the chat, right. so. <laughs> shout out to Hot Coldman. Um, also for that, you must follow this channel. Ha ha, if you haven't already. Um, so with that, let's move on from Sony VR in the future to something we're more inclined with in the past. And that is, Psychonauts 2 has been funded. Um... So, Psychonauts 2 was unveiled at the Game Awards. Uh, they showed off the trailer for the new game, uh, and it turned out to be a FIG uh, uh, fundraiser. Or it kind of like is a Kickstarter, but there's an option for investors to put in um, a good amount of money and actually invest in it and get possibly some money in return. Um, so, it was on FIG, um, and they just crossed that barrier. Uh, let's let me check how much they raise right now. Cause I know yeah, they... their their Kickstarter or their crowdfunding situation is is a bit different than other ones. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so the money they raised as of right now, and there's still three days left on the on the thing, is at three million four hundred seventy-two dollars and one hundred fifty-six. Uh, one hundred fifty-six. Their goal initially was three million and three hundred thousand dollars. So, first off, I'm very excited the fact that Psychonauts 2 has been funded. Like, yeah, Psych it's rad. Psychonauts is freaking awesome, and I am very, very excited. But, with that said, um, I didn't put money into the, to fund this, but, like, I... There, the reason why is because, like, the, the whole fiasco last time Double Fine did with, with their uh, Kickstarter... Uh, with, what fiasco? That game was amazing. No, no, not, not, not with Psychonauts 1, but, like... Uh, in their you're, previous you're, in the previous Kickstarter, I know project. I know what you're talking. You're talking about uh, um, oh, fucking I can't remember the name of the game. It was Broken uh, Age. Broken Age. Thank you. Yeah, you talking yeah. about that one? What yeah. fiasco came from that? Um, so um, I can't remember exactly the full details, but basically they mismanaged their money. Um, it might might have been have been Broken Age. I uh, might have been another company, but basically they had a game in the works, um, and uh, they mismanaged their money they gave a company a lot of money to make a game but ended up you know just wasting a lot of it um and i launched a kickstarter for it um actually hang on i'm being i don't pretty, know I'm like doing, i don't i think you may be thinking of a different company because i don't remember double fine doing that um there was i can't i'm, I'm doing a horrible job in explaining it but basically there was, a, there was a huge fiasco with double fine with the money situation um and a lot of people were really turned off by it um and uh, they, you know, the credibility of uh, of Schaefer kind of kind of took a hit. What are you talking about? I don't remember this at all. You don't remember this at all, really? All right, hang on. I'm, I'm gonna just right here. I'm gonna just gonna look up money fiasco double fine because that because that that happened. Okay, broken promise, double fines, broken age, uh, kicks out or miss. This is on Engadget. So I'm going to read just a short snippet here. Uh, I'll read the f two paragraphs here. Um, let's see. Uh, the world of video game design is a mysterious one. Double Fine's Kickstarter pitch reads, What really we have behind closed doors for development studios often unknown and unpresumably understood. Those words were written around February 2012. Ahead for a long-time venture game developer uh, Kickstarter campaign launch in order to introduce its latest effort uh, to the world. The project required $400,000, double fine, Tim Schafer said, and the goal eventually shattered by more than 3 million pledges and would un uh, unfold over a 6 to 8 month period. A small team led by Schaefer promised to create a point and click adventure game in the Bay of Monkey Island and Manic Mansion. The game, that game was known as Double Fine Adventures, now Broken Age, a fitting title uh, considering what came next. Last evening, or at the time this article was posted, Schaefer took to the Kickstarter uh, backer page to explain what's going on with Broken Age, and now well beyond the six to eight months period originally promised. I designed too much game, he said. That uh, that means not it's not ready in case it isn't clear. Moreover, half a half done version of the game pared down from its original scope will launch on Steam's early access section long before the full game uh, planned launch and long before Kickstarter backers will play. Uh, what they paid for in order to find uh, the fund the f final half. Uh, in his letter last night, Schaefer said backers still have exclusive beta uh, across before launch uh, on Steam, 
as promised on the Kickstarter. The, the half complete version is planned for open sale otherwise. We would actually sell the early access version of the game uh, to the public at large and use the money to find remaining game development. The second part of the game would come in the free update in a few months down the road, closer to April, May, uh, April to May 2014, the letter said. And you can now just link you to the entire article actually right here. For those who want to read the entire details of what happened. So Yeah, I don't remember that at all. I that just was, that was that was that was a huge deal. And I'll, and I'll show, give it to you. As well, well let, let's let's analyze what a huge deal is because realistically those people still got their game. They did, they did. But like the promise wasn't fully fulfilled at the time when it was released. He they, they were given a half a game, not the full game. Um but but that said, I don't you know, know about that dude. I mean, don't get me wrong. Broken Age, like the first half, was really good. I like, I like it. Um, but like, I I can understand. I can, I, from looking from a different angle, I can understand why people would be upset because if you put in, in money for for a project and it, they are saying like, okay, this is the date we are going to aim for this date. We're going to give you this full game, and then when they got to that date, it's like we have half a game. It's not fully complete yet. So here's half the game. And you have to wait for the other half of the game to be, you know, completed. So, I can understand, you know, people are pretty upset because, like, you know, putting in money. Because, like, the thing about it, too, is, like, you, you don't screw with people's money. That's a, what's one of the, like, one, one of the main rules when it comes to life. Is, don't screw with people's money. Because then they will, you know, go out there and say, like, you know, hey, what's, what's going on? Um, but at the same time, you know, games are, games are hard. Game. Making games is hard, as I think the quote been hearing a lot in the game industry as of late. And um, it's definitely, you know, things happen, and, you know, sometimes, you know, games will be pushed back. Thus, you know, see a lot of games being pushed back as of late because they have been underperforming on these new consoles as of late. So, yeah, that, so people are very speculative. But regardless of, even with the speculation and people kind of not really wanting to, to put in the money for this Kickstarter, it still raised enough money to where it was still funded. I'm still excited. Uh, people are still pretty excited for the game, but there's still some speculation is, will this game come out in time? Will this money be put into good use, you know, and not mismanaged? So, that's that's kind of where everything is stemming. I, I mean, good God, man. Like, I think what frustrates me about that story you just read was that it sounds like to me people are just basically like whiny whiny little kids who are like like you can sit there and argue oh well it's their money and they they don't want their money to go to a shitty thing and i totally get that i totally i totally understand that but at the end of the day and and something we've discussed on this podcast before when it's come to like um when it comes to uh, kickstarter you're always taking a gamble if I come up to you, Anthony, and I go, hey, man, I'm really looking to get this thing. Uh, I really want this game, right? I mm -hmm. want this $20 game, and, uh, you know, I'll uh, um, I'll play it, and then I'll, I'll write a review for it, right? Yeah. And you go, yeah, sure, $20, here you go. You have given me access to money that I can do whatever the fuck I want with, period, mm -hmm. okay? Now, if I don't buy that game... And I buy something else, like let's say a sandwich, mm -hmm. really expensive sandwich. <laughs> um, you don't have the right to be pissed off at me. You have already given away your right to say what I do with that twenty dollars. Yeah. By giving me the twenty dollars, mm -hmm. so people who are pissed off that they didn't quite make the promise for a for the game that they wanted or what the fuck ever, um, or or a, a time slot. They don't have the right to complain about that. They didn't go and sit there and tell Tim Schafer, like, we are your bosses. They went, here's some money because I want to see this happen. That's what happened. Whatever Double Fine decides to do with that money is on their own accord. They didn't lie. They didn't cheat. They didn't swindle. They didn't steal. They literally just went, well, we weren't able to make a few promises that we said we were. Oh, well. Yeah. So people go like, I'm not giving money to a new Kickstarter that they're trying to do for a different game because of some bullshit that I want to fucking hold over their heads. I think That's what I think what's interesting about this is the fact that they've are 
they were given so much money to make this game though they they went like they actually raised uh, more money than what their intended goal was and they only managed to get half of the game done in that time uh in terms of when they wanted to release it so it's the, the, the term money equals time can be applied here but again to kind of reiterate this is Tim Schafer and he had a small group a small group of team to make the game it isn't it is it a huge it is a huge company like uh, Rockstar or EA or Blizzard who have you know hundreds and hundreds of staff that can work on a, a single game and, and get it out in the right time so there's definitely there's definitely going to be going to be like at least in this situation. Um, well, we've had this conversation on on the podcast before. Not even just Double Fine, but in general, when you give your money to somebody for whatever reason, you no longer have control with what that money, what happens to that money. Yeah. Period. Yeah, that's true. You know, you fund a Kickstarter, you fund a Indiegogo, what the fuck ever crowdsource crowdfunding source you want to fund you don't have say what happens to that money period yeah it's it's like it's like when you go and buy a game you go and purchase a new game shut your fucking mouth and play the game period like yes we are on this podcast and we discuss news and gaming and we discuss things like that and i write re well i <laughs> writing reviews um but let me go back to a little game I like to call Mass Effect 3. Uh, the ending that the developers made was the ending that they wanted you to see. You don't like it? Fine. Perfectly fine. Yeah. No one's saying you have to like it. No one's saying that you have to understand it. You don't like it, you don't like it. Alright, no problem. However, you don't have the right to open your fucking mouth. You don't have the right to sit there and tell them exclusively you're ending shit and I want a new ending. You don't have the right to do that. Much like a Kickstarter, you don't have the right to tell uh, uh, Tim Schafer and company that, well, I'm not I'm not crowdfunding that one because of this, the, the a few things that I didn't like of the other one. That's nonsense. Absolute nonsense. Like, Part sure, you could argue, and, oh, well, that's, you know, like, well, if, if I don't purchase it, then that's how I'm telling them I don't like it. Fine, whatever. Yeah. I don't, it's your money. You spend how you want it mm -hmm. or want to. Yeah. Want it. It's my money and I need it now. <laughs> uh, but it drives me nuts that, you know, you're telling, like, Anthony, you're telling me that the, there's, there's these guys out there that give the middle finger to Tim Schaefer because of some excremental bullshit from their last crowdfunding campaign and to me it's ju it just comes down to the situation of these are the same kids that whined and complained that they didn't get a specific game for christmas or whined and complained that the world isn't fair and that it should owe them shit that's that's what you've told me that is a hundred percent what you've told me Yes. But In no I... way, shape, or form has anything that you've explained to me right now said, oh, these are like-minded people who share the same opinions and, and feelings as I do. Yeah. I, it, it, it's just the way, to me, the way it kind of comes off is like, much of these people who have invested into this game as in, in the Kickstarter, or at least in the fig, um, like these are people's monies. Like, this is basically how it feels to be an investor in, in, in terms of the games they put in. And we have seen, like, some games are good, some games are bad. Um, an investor would like to know what is going on with the development. That's why Tim Shaver and Double Fine are pretty transparent sure. when it comes sure. to, to the games when they make. Um, I think when it comes to when it comes to things that they were promised but were not able to fulfill that promise or half of it uh, in this situation, um, a lot of people are going to get mad. Like if I was an if I was an investor, say in the Green Bay Packers, you know, they actually have an open investment in in there, but that's another story for another time. Um, basically, I you know I put a good money. I own part of the Packers now. Okay, so then there if if like say they go through the season, you know, they they did you know okay, 
you know, in the first season. The next season, they did pretty shitty, and they did it for the past couple of seasons. Then I'm like, okay, you guys are you guys are, are not great right now. You're actually making me lose money. There needs to be changes. There. Okay, that's okay. First off, let me let me stop you there. That's different. That is not the same thing as what we're talking about here. My, my, you are not you are not an investor of this game. You are you have literally given money. That's it. You that's can't true. take your money back. That's like true. once the Kickstarter is yeah. over, you can't take your money back. That's true. I mean, like I, the comparison, the fact that a lot of people you know, are faux investors. Yes, they are donating money to the campaign, but they feel like. They are now a part of, of this of this entire situation. They're not, though, and that's what pisses me off. They're absolutely not, though. They're not a part of it. Just because you went, here's 20 bucks, doesn't mean you're a part of whatever the hell I'm doing. True, true. It's just, that's, that's, what, I'm, that's what I'm voicing for the other side. That's what they, that's what people who Kickstarter game, who Kickstarter games feel. Because, like, when they put in money into it, they feel... Not only are they putting money to see it go, fall through, but they feel invested. They're now a part of the community. They, they get updates from the developer. They are because the developers being it. nice. That's that's what that comes down to. The developers being nice. They're thankful that people were willing to spend money on them, and that's great. I think that that's that that shows the the uh, character of a of a developer that gives a shit. But again, I can't stress enough. You you aren't a fucking investor. <laughs> you don't deserve that treatment. <laughs> yeah, but at the same time, like in a way, gamer gamers are. <coughs> and I What's say that? I'm sorry. And in a way, like gamers are if you think about it, because much of the games that are being sold today are games that uh, ride or die on depending on how many people bought that <laughs> game. Ride or die, motherfucker. <laughs> so like it, it in a way. Gamers and the people of public are the investors. They de they they determine how your game's going to sell and how. When you went successful. and saw Star Wars, when you went and saw Star Wars, did you give money to the theater or did you give money to the uh, studio that made it? I yeah, well, that's a technical question because I. When you go buy a game, did you give money to the person behind the counter at Walmart or did you give it to straight to the developer? That would be to the cashier, which in you know. Right. Yeah. So let me explain how investing works. Not that. That's not how investing works. Now I'm not saying this to you, Anthony. I'm pointing out that you are not an investor. An investor sees a, what's the word? A uh, sees an investment come back to them. Mm -hmm. You aren't seeing that. You are literally a consumer. That's it. You're a consumer that's willing to go, I'm giving you money based on a promise. That's mm -hmm. not investing. If I want to invest in Double Fine, I'll go invest in Double Fine and hope that I see a return on my investment. Right. You aren't doing that when you just play a game or, or see a movie. You're a consumer. I didn't buy the Shovel Knight Amiibo, that by the way is fucking awesome, because... <laughs> I'm, I want to invest in Amiibo or Nintendo or Yacht Club games. I would if I had the money to do that. <laughs> I bought this thing because I'm a consumer and I want to consume Shovel Knight any way that I can. <laughs> That's my argument for this. That's my argument for crowdfunding in general is crowdfunding is a fantastic way to get some awesome stuff made. But if you are trying to convince me that you are an investor simply because you loaned money to somebody, it's not how it works. And it'll never be how it works. Yeah. I, I, I still... I, 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 I wholeheartedly agree with the investment thing. I think that you know investors and consumers are totally do different things. Um, but you know, as consumers, maybe I should have labeled it differently. Consumers dictate how well a game will sell when it gets out there. Um, depending on the company, like if the company is like Rockstar and say they put out, I don't know, Red Dead, the sexy edition, and like it fails, you know, they can take the hit and it's like, okay, well, we're not going to do that again. We're going to make another game that's probably better for the core audience. Um, and because of the sales, they're not do, do too well. And then they take like, okay, what well, we need to do next time. Um, 
uh, consumers are, are pretty much kind of like these game companies, these game developers are kind of in the hands of consumers sometimes when it comes to some games, because it, sure, one hundred percent, I completely agree with you on that. Yeah, because um, like there's some there's some games that for some of the indie developers, like they kind of they're hoping that the game would sell enough so they can you know do whatever they want to do, you know, make another game, you know, get some food or whatever. Um, so yeah, like maybe I should have phrased it differently, but like. Um, the consumer definitely has a, a, a huge part in determining how a game company moves on. But forward. only on a small scale. Uh, and this is something that I think is important, is if you don't like a product that some other company made and you want to show them that you don't like it, that's when you just don't buy their next product. Yeah, yeah. You just simply don't buy it. That's, I mean, I can't stress that enough. It doesn't get any easier than that. Yeah. But at the end of the day, let me let me let me throw some numbers out at you. Okay. If fifty thousand people buy said, like, let's say the next, let's say the next uh, uh, Street Fighter, Anthony, is a piece of pile and shit, just garbage, right? Yeah. Everyone hates it. Well, everyone you know hates it. <laughs> a good majority hates it, right? Yeah, yeah. Let's say. Let's say it sells... Okay, I'm just throwing ballpark numbers here. Nothing actual substantial. Let's say it sells 100,000 copies. Okay? Oof. That's really tiny, but I, I work with small numbers here. Yeah. Um, My feeble brain can't handle it. <laughs> uh, so, let, so, okay, so like I said, let's say 100,000 copies. 25% of that, which is a huge number, don't like it. Okay? Um, that is 25,000 people. And those 25,000 people vow to never buy another uh, Street Fighter again unless Capcom makes it better than this. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Capcom goes, oh, the next three games are going to be just like this. In the time that the game is out on the market to the time that the next one comes out, they will have not only gained those 25,000 back with new people, mm -hmm. but... That seventy five thousand that devout that was just like I like it. They're gonna buy the next one, so your feeble little I'm not gonna buy it because I don't wanna really doesn't fucking matter at the end of the day. And most people aren't gonna understand that. They're gonna think my ten bucks matters, my sixty bucks matters. Not if millions of people are buying or consuming said product. Yeah. So you can think you matter as a consumer. But you only don't unless there's a mob mentality. Yeah. Because there is a majority that love Mass Effect 3. Yeah, that's true. And even regardless of the controversy that Mass Effect 3 at the ending that they had. Oh, and they're the going to sell a ton of Ma uh, Mass yeah. Effect Andromeda. Are you yeah, kidding? like the game is still, this game still sold very well. Um, they're making, you know, another Mass Effect game. Um, you know, and it's not going to sell from, you know, getting, getting even more money. So the thing is, though, what I would add to it to kind of end on this discussion is that uh, Bobby Kotick, CEO of Activision, once said, "Gamers are idiots because when at the time Guitar Hero, I believe it was like two, I think it was Guitar Hero two, Guitar Hero three, came out, uh, came out, and there was tons of peripherals. We're talking about the the drum set, the guitar, uh, and whatnot that was due to play Guitar Hero. He basically kind of came out, came out and said, like, you know what, gamers are idiots. gamers are idiots. They're gonna buy as much as they can and as as, as, as fast as they can because it is, a, it is a now generation like they want to be a part of the discussion so they'll buy yeah. that game just to be a part of that discussion and to his credit he's actually pretty right I mean he's I, absolutely correct yeah but this I, also I mean he could say that about gamers but realistically it's just about consumers in general that's true that, that's actually very very true um, so yeah like it's we are living in a consumer world, and that's kind of how a consumer is. Uh, and I'm a consumer girl. Yes, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Oh, and that was actually pretty good. I like that. Was, that was good. That was good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so going off from the Psychonauts, Psychonauts two talk, uh, and moving on to something a bit more on the lighter side. So, <laughs> Hideo Kojima. You know, we we've discussed a lot about him. You know, this this entire time. Of course. Um, He's not only is he legendary in game making, but also like for the controversy they have with Konami, and we had we said our piece, and we you know about the whole the whole situation. 
Um, recently, Haru Kojima is going to be inducted into the Hall of Fame at DICE, the AIAS, and um, he's going to be inducted by, and this is just, I find this is the most ironic thing, but guess who he's going to be inducting him, like the person that's going to give him the award. Somebody from Konami, I guess, the yeah. way you worded this? Well, no, not... Well, not quite really, but kind of. <laughs> um, Who? Giro del Toro. Ha ha ha! Well, I wouldn't call that irony. I would, I would say that's bittersweet victory. But yeah, like get your point. <laughs> it's, it, it's, 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 it's hilarious, but you know. Well, hey, from what I understand, and I'm just spitballing here, um, he's working with Guillermo del Toro right now on a game for PlayStation. Um, is that true? Because I know that they there were talks that they want to do a game, but um, it was it was just more or less talks, nothing quite concrete. Uh, I mean talks talks is still good. Yeah, that's true. It means that there's still there's still hope. Yeah. Um, I was gonna say. I but, mean, it's cool. It's cool. I think it's yeah. rad that he's being inducted by by Guillermo. He's a friend of Guillermo, and mm -hmm. I, I I have no problems with it. Definitely, definitely. You know, I, I, I'm I'm a huge supporter of Hari, of uh, Haru Gujima and like um, anything that man you know creates, it's just like cool and awesome. Um, you know, Metal Gear, Snatcher, or whatever. Um, but yeah, no, it's it's cool. That Did he's... you just say Snatcher? Yeah, that was a game. That the... I've never heard of that game. Before. Yeah, that was the game. That was the game before Metal Gear. Like he did, he did Metal Gear, Snatcher, and then he did um. Oh man, what was that? What was those mech games? Zone of the Under, Zone of the Enders. That was his. Channel. Oh, he did that. Wow. Yeah, that was him. Um, but yeah, no, it's cool. You know, I'm, I'm super happy that he's getting the board, and um, you know, hey, the man deserves it. So, if I had, if I had a beer or something, I would drink to that. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I think we have. One more. Okay, one more story. Ah, I fucking jumped right into the water on this game. <laughs> for those, Sorry. For those, who, for those who are listening to the podcast, uh, Craig is playing Shovel Knight right now. <laughs> playing Plague Knight. It's, it's, the thing about, like, Shovel Knight, it's super easy because, well, I mean, it's easier to make it. Uh, it's, it's the fact that, like, Plague Knight has, uh, two, has a double jump and then he also has, like, a charge jump thing. So, yeah. like, it makes it just so much more challenging. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, <coughs> so, last story of today. Now, I just found out this morning. Um, Nintendo is officially partnering with uh, G3, Genesis 3, for Smash. Um, what exactly is Genesis 3? Genesis 3 is it's next weekend, uh, which I find that very, very perfect since, like, uh, age, uh, Awesome Games on Quiz ending today. Um, Genesis 3 is uh, basically the international tournament for Smash Brothers. Um, much of the like the biggest names and talents out of the uh, Smash scene are going to be uh, in, in next week. Going to be here next weekend. Not particularly here, but like going to be playing next weekend. And officially, Nintendo of America has partnered with the tournament. Um, and the reason why I brought this up is because this has been like and Nintendo has slowly kind of figured out like okay. There was a huge scene in terms of the of the, of the competitive side of, of Smash that did that not realize. Uh, it wasn't too long ago, it was two years ago, that they were on the verge of, of not allowing it to be streamed at EVO because um, Smash was the victor in the um, raise of the money f uh, against breast cancer to be a, uh, one of the top games for EVO to be streamed. And they almost took that away. Um, it is surprising how fast they quickly changed it to where they realized, like, oh, we need to let them do this. Like, this is free advertising. Like, like no one believed yeah. um, with the amount of Didn't audience. I, I swear to God, I, like, you and I said that. <laughs> mm -hmm. We did. We did. And, like, it's just so surprising the fact that they are finally... They, 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 they turned around in, in the span from that same incident at EVO to uh, now, like, they said, okay... This is gonna be the biggest international event uh, in 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 Smash in history. We are gonna back this. We're gonna partner with them, and we're going to provide whatever they need. So, 
yeah, good on Nintendo to kind of realize, like, dude, this is, this is like, I want to say esports, but like, this is kind of like the direction that, you know, most competitive scenes go. And it is basically just free advertising. It's a huge advertisement for Nintendo. I would not be surprised if there are uh, trailers and ads for Nintendo products in between matches. Like, we're going to see something from, you know, Mario Maker. Or we're going to see something from, you know, uh, from Smash. You know, the, the trailer for Bayonetta. Like, we're going to see so much Nintendo set, uh, uh, stuff. So, yeah, like, uh, it, it to me... It really shows the fact that they kind of learned and figured out. And, and out of all the companies, Nintendo is the one that's always been like behind on certain things when it comes to, I want to say trends in in on the internet or on, on in America. But like, they're definitely the ones, um, the same, the same company who comes out kicking and screaming, not wanting to have an online component to their console when. Uh, Microsoft and Sony had that long before they even started doing so with like Nintendo Wii and Wii U. So like, it's in, it's very very satisfying for me to see that they finally figure it out. It just took them a while. <laughs> so like, yeah. So good on them, you know, for for turning around for sure. And uh, I can't wait to watch it. Uh, it's gonna be next weekend. It's gonna be on the fifteenth. So it's going to be, yeah, starting next Friday. So um, definitely tune in and see some high-level international Smash action. I believe it's going to be Melee and Smash 4, I want to say. So, yeah. Anyways, with that said, we have reached to the end of the show. Yay! <laughs> um, so, with that said, Greg, where can they find you on the internet? You can find me on uh, Instagram, Facebook, uh, Twitter. Just search for Chub Rock Geek, and I'm sure you'll find me. Uh, you can find me on um, Snapchat as uh, Snup, uh, Chub Rock Snap. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see, where else? Uh, I stream pretty regularly on uh, Half Empty Energy Tank. As a matter of fact, I'm having a show tonight. I had a show. I had a show last night. I was trying a new uh, a new run and and. Uh, Mario 4, and, or Mario 4, Mega Man 4 for the Mega Manathon. Mm -hmm. Happy next month, I'm sorry, it's fucking dude. Uh, what was your, what's yeah, your time no. last last night? Well, the, the original route, if you know anything about Mega Man 4, because I didn't prior to playing it, um, the route goes uh, Frogman, uh, which then gives you the rain, and then you take out Brightman, which then you take out Pharaoh Man. And then Pharaoh's Blast works on um, Ring Man, and then Ring Man goes to Dust Man, and then Dust Man goes to uh, Skull Man, which I always make the joke that he has allergies. That's why Dust Man works on him. <laughs> uh, and then and then and then uh, it goes Skull Man to Dive Man, and then Dive Man, and then you finish on Drobe Man. And I have a route perfectly in my mind for how to do that. And when I did that last time, I was at one hour and twenty minutes. Last night, uh, one of our regulars named Hawkfoot, he starts on Pharaoh Man. Goes the same route, but starts on Pharaoh Man, the third boss. Pharaoh Man's a hard fight without Bright Man's power. So I was practicing on Pharaoh Man, seeing how quickly I could beat him. And he's actually not too bad once you understand what he's doing. Mm -hmm. The problem is, is that Going that route stops me from having Bright Man's power on certain parts, which is really difficult to deal with. Right. And then on top of that, um, uh, there's a few other moments that I'm just like, I was having the hardest time with just because I didn't know any tactics. But I will say that what di what I did get out of it was that I, I can use... Um, uh, instead of using Bright Man's power on certain parts, I can use Pharaoh Man. And then I can beat Bright Man without my without Pharaoh Man's power. So I learned a few things last night, but it did take me almost two hours to beat it again. Ah, I which see. is like, I mean, it sucks because I I need to cut that. I I only have an hour and a half at the Mega Manathon, so definitely. But definitely. Uh, I mean, if anything, was... out of this week, you can definitely check up on how some other people did their strats uh, during Awesome Games on Quick Week. Yeah, that well, they didn't play Mega Man Four. Oh, that's right. <laughs> they, uh, yeah, they played they played Mega Man uh, Two X, 
it was six one that they played, I think it was. Um yeah, they played. But I have a yeah. I do wanna say, um not so much the heat channel on Twitch. Mm -hmm. I mean I would follow it if you can, but um definitely follow the social medias, which is just search half empty energy tank on on Facebook, search half empty e tank on Twitter. Um and uh, we have an Instagram too, which I think is just half empty energy tank. It might be just half empty e tank. Search both. But the reason I'm telling you is because we have a lot of announcements coming up that I can't talk about yet. A lot of very exciting stuff for Mega Manathon 4. Um, not only will I be there, which is I'm so excited about. I'm so but, jealous. Because um, <laughs> it's in Maryland. It's on the other side of the goddamn country. I know, I know. <laughs> uh, but. Uh, there's a few other there's there's some there's some exciting things popping up here soon, so mm -hmm. stay tuned. It's happening. It's all fucking just. Da -da 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 -da. Um. <laughs> but yeah, that's it. That's all I got. <laughs> cool. Awesome. Uh, you can follow me personally on, on Twitter at the play of knowledge. Like you'll see on your screen. And let me get to the sh end of the show. If you enjoy this podcast, if you enjoy watching or listening to us. Please check out this podcast on the iTunes and Stitcher under Mission Star Podcast, as well as on our website at missionstarpodcast.com. Uh, if you enjoy convention talk, if you enjoy us talking about conventions we've just, we just been to, what we experienced, what our final thoughts are on, on, a, on a convention, check out The Conover, which also is available on iTunes and Stitcher. If you enjoy entertainment, movies, comic books, video games, a bit of anime, uh, but everything in between, please check out the Rolling Twenties. Hosted by Jeremy Wilson on our website, as well as on iTunes and Stitcher. And again, all these three podcasts are available on our website to listen to at missionstartpodcast.com. Um, and then one quick note. Um, be sure to follow this channel. If you're listening to us on iTunes, be sure to follow uh, twitch.tv slash missionstartpodcast. Um, if you're watching this now, if you're watching this on YouTube, be sure to hit that subscribe button on YouTube. As well, hit the follow button here on our Twitch channel. Uh, and be notified... Um, every week when we go live at this time, 11 a.m. Saturday morning for your daily weekly dose of gaming news. With that being said, this is going to be another show, another week, and we'll be back next week. And with that, we will see you guys next time.